Hello and welcome to the second video in our Getting Started series for O&M Profiler ESP. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the first video where we went over some of the basic mechanics of the system, some of the navigation and a few little tips. We're going to rely on some of the things covered in that video a little bit in this session. Um, you will be able to follow this without that, but it would be beneficial to have watched that one first. It's only five or six minutes, so it's, it's worth a watch. So yeah, in this video we're going to cover a basic pension switch. It's one of the core functions of the system. Uh, it's probably still our most commonly used area. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do one from start to finish. Uh, we're not going to go into all of the advanced things that you can do in that. We will do another video that covers some of those. But by the time you've watched this video, you'll be able to run your first switching case. So without further ado, let's dive in. So when you first log in, your home menu will be open. If it's not, if you've turned that feature off or if you've been using the system already, you might be greeted by a closed home button. As it says in the text, click here to start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a new switch or transfer quote. So you can see quite helpfully there, it's got the extra label that says, if you're ever not sure what to do, you've got the how to, so how to run a switch case. It'll tell me exactly what I need to do and it'll flash the button that I need to click. So if you ever forget or you're not sure, just click on that how to, look for the actual action that you want to do and it will give you a good explanation and, uh, and a good prompt of how to start that. Okay, so let's click on that and create a new quote. Okay, so the system will bring the inputs to you when it needs to. So the important thing to bear in mind here is that this is a brand new quote. We don't know anything about the quote, about the client, so the system needs to capture that information. Hence, the client details editor is brought to the fore. Um, if it's a client you've already got on the system, you can simply pick them from the dropdown. If you're creating a brand new client, you'll see the red boxes, the required fields. You'll see the exclamation marks telling you there's some missing information. As I go through and fill these in, those will disappear. And you'll see as I pick the last one here, the exclamation mark's gone. There's nothing else we need to fill in this form. There are some optional features. So we can control who the advisor is, what their service basis is, if that affects the advisor charge and things like that. You can even name the quote to make it a bit easier for you, add comments in. Um, this is automatically done, so you don't need to worry about it normally, but if you want to have some different reference in there, you can. Um, but as I say, all of that is optional information. The information the system requires are all marked with a red field, and as you can see, they've been completed on this form now. So you'll notice down the bottom, the next step in this journey is current plans, and again, we've got that exclamation mark. Obviously, we're going to do a switch. We need to know some information about where they are at the minute. So let's head along to current plans. The system knows you must have at least one current plan, so it's automatically opened the current plan editor. And it's not until this point that we actually determine what type of switch we're doing. So you can see in here, personal pension for pension switching, we can do ISA transfers, we can do DB transfers, all sorts of other options in here. But we're going to keep it simple today and do a personal pension switch. Now this is an optional field, you'll notice there's not a red box around it. Um, it is useful to fill in for a few reasons though, I'm going to pick Abbey Life because they're first in the list. First time server is it, it automatically names the current plan for me. Again, you can overtype that if you want. So if you want to include the client reference number or whatever else, you can do that. And um, there's another advantage to filling in the provider, which is when we come to add in the current holdings later on, it'll pre-filter that list as best it can as well. So you'll see exactly the same as the client details form. We've got various bits of information to fill in with the red text around it. We've got exclamation marks next to the bits that are required, and we don't next to the optional bits. So let's step through the required fields first. So the current value, obviously we need to know what this is worth at the minute. You'll normally be filling these in from a benefit statement. So just reading through the statement that the existing provider has given you. We've defaulted the ASAT date to today. Uh, if it's from earlier in the week, a couple of months ago, whatever it might be, you can change that date. I'm going to leave it as today and I'm going to put the current value in. It automatically fills in the transfer values the same. Again, if there's any difference in that, if there's a bonus or a, um, a penalty for terminating early, you can just overtype that number. Nothing else we need to fill in here, so let's go to the next section, supplied maturity values. And the default here is inflation adjusted rates supplied. Almost all of the statements you see are gonna be on this basis, so you generally don't need to touch that option. Likewise, they're gonna be provided to a retirement age. Uh, you can do a term as well, but for most pension switches, it's gonna be a retirement age. Um, and we can start filling that information in. So the only thing, if you've got multiple plans on the system, you need to have a consistent retirement age. So the system needs to know that they're all three, or so the system needs to know however many plans you've got, they're all gonna retire at the same time. Let's just fill in the low, mid, and high. 
and that is all of our required fields completed. You see all the exclamation marks have gone, we can, we can move away from this if we need to. There's a couple of other things I want to draw your attention to though. So as I said, almost always it's going to be inflation adjusted rates supplied. There might be scenarios though where it's, it's very difficult to get a statement from the existing provider or perhaps you don't even trust the statement from the existing provider or there's something else going on in the quote that you can't, uh, you can't easily use that. So we've got a couple of options around that. We've got estimated by system. This will allow you to put in a single charge for that plan. So it's a 1% plan. I know exactly what it is. Just put 1% in there. The system will then calculate the numbers. Uh, likewise, with a bit more granularity, you can do calculate using product charges. So you get it, it breaks it down a little bit more for the individual charges. I would stress that if you're using either of those two options, it's worth running it by your compliance or your file checkers, whoever, whoever does that work for you, just making sure they're happy with that approach. Because obviously it's always better to use the, the statement given from the provider. You need a good reason not to. Um, there is also monetary rate supplied. That's if they haven't been inflation adjusted. Uh, we don't we don't see very many of those nowadays. You might get the, the odd one in a thousand, but uh, you rarely have to use that. So the other three sections we've got are optional. You don't need to fill them in, but there will be scenarios where you want to. So let's have a look at growth rates. So by default, the system's assumed that the existing provider has used the industry standard growth rates. Obviously, that might not be the case. They might have used reduced growth rates, um, in which case that's easy to change. You can simply come in here, inflation adjusted fund specific rates, and type in the reduced values that they've given you. So it might be minus one at low, for example. We, we automatically do the conversion for you to nominal, so you can get an idea of if the numbers are right for a start. Obviously, the, the maximum nominal is 258. So if you've got numbers above that, something's not quite right. Uh, you might see quirks like people uh, rounding them to diff slightly differently or whatever. They're all done on the same basis, 2, 5, and 8. If you get something like 8.01 for the high rate, for example, you, you're pretty confident you're on industry standard rates. Um, the other thing you might see is a different growth rate for different funds. Uh, the system can handle that as well. So all you need to do in that scenario is come into the inflation adjusted fund specific rates. We're doing something out of the, out of the ordinary. We're doing something away from the norm. Come into that mode and then use this calculator option at the top here. I click on that, it asks me how many funds I've got. You can type in the fund name, the percentage invested, and the growth rates, and the system will work out a weighted average for you and pop it into those boxes. I'm going to leave this on industry standard for this quote, but obviously you will have scenarios where you need to venture into those. If there's ongoing contributions to the plan, you can type those in. It'll ask you some extra questions. It'll talk about the frequency of the payment, escalation, paid up maturity values. Again, I'm going to keep that clear for now. We're not going to do ongoing contributions in this case. The last section is the holdings. Again, it's not a required field. It will give you some extra information about the existing plan though when you come to look at the switch results. So the, the core of the switching process is a cost-based comparison, but by entering in the holdings of the existing plan, you can do performance comparison, asset allocation comparison, all that sort of stuff as well. So it is worth doing if you've got that information, but it's not a deal breaker if you haven't. Uh, quite often with, with profit funds, for example, they'll be difficulty getting the information. Morningstar, our data provider, might not have any information about that with profit funds, so you won't be able to add it in. It isn't the end of the world. Now, although it's an optional field, I am going to fill it in on this quote for all the reasons I just mentioned. So if we come in here, add funds, there's a few options. You can add them from a short list. If you know the ISIN numbers, if you know names, it's dead easy to just type in there and pick them. You can go out into the full-blown fund research. I'm not going to do that in this session because we've got a whole session of all about fund research. Um, the other option you've got is to use our smart paste functionality. That's a great piece of kit that'll let you just paste in a load of ISIN numbers and percentages and automatically convert them. Um, there's a few examples in there as well for you to have a look at, but for the purposes of today's session, I'm just going to pick from a short list. Now you remember earlier on, I said that there was a couple of advantages for picking the existing provider. Here's the other one. My list is automatically filtered. It's done a, a very basic text search just for the word Abbey, and it's pulled in all of the matching funds. So I don't even have to think about it. I can just pick them. So they're in the fixed interest. Nice little feature. If 100% is in one fund, you can simply add it with the selected plan value. Uh, if it's maybe it's a few funds, you can go through the add selected fund and enter the percentages or the values afterwards. I'm going to take the easy option and I'm going to put 100% in that one fund. Close that down and you'll see it's automatically done that behind the scenes. So that's it for this plan. There's nothing else I need to fill in. Um, if I've got another plan, dead easy, just click add another plan and it'll go through this process again for the other one. Uh, I'm going to come out at this point and say we're done. This is our current plan list. So we didn't really see this on the way in the first time because as I say, the system knew we needed to add one, so it did it for us. But if you ever need to get back in and make changes, you've got a little edit icon there. We can add a new plan there, 
even if you highlight the existing plan, you can go edit there if that's a bit fiddly for you. Um, but that's all there is to do in the current plan list. Worth noting at this point that because my system defaults are set up in such a way that I don't need to pick new investment every time, I'm actually ready to get to results now. I've got a green tick on the OK button. I can produce results. I don't need to go any further through this wizard. I am going to though, because we said at the start we were going to teach you how to run your first pension switch and out of the box your defaults won't be set for the new investment. So let's go into the new investment section. I could spend a lot of time in this section. It's obviously important. It's where you're going to put the client's money in and it will have a big impact on the result set based on the charges of the funds and everything else. And there's lots of different options and scenarios around picking funds. Um, again, we, we will cover this in a separate session, so I'm just going to gloss over it to an extent today, but give you enough of an understanding that you'll be able to do it yourself, hopefully. So the default view is sector mode. That's what this is here. This is saying to me, basically, I don't know exactly where I'm going to invest for each product. What I want to do is get a kind of idea of how the land lies, ballpark figure, um, if I was to pick a particular sector. And you can mix and match these sectors, so I can put 50% in flexible, 50% in 40 to 85. Um, or I can simply double click on one of these and it will automatically put 100% in. Other important feature in this section is the using rule. This will determine how the system picks a fund in that sector. So the one I've got it set to is lowest annual fund charge with five year performance, including funds in the equivalent IMA sector. So the idea there is it's not just going to pick pension funds, it's going to pick OICS and unit trusts as well if they're relevant. You can see the different rule sets that we've got. So we've got the cheapest fund, basically, the lowest annual fund charge with different criteria, and we've got the largest fund with different criteria. So I'll leave it on the one I had it set to. Um, if you want to do like I've done and have it always default to the same thing, you can simply click on this option at the top, save as pension sector defaults, and next time through, it will automatically default to what you've got it set to. There are a couple of other options, though. So that, that will pick a potentially a different fund for every product, just the, the most appropriate for each one based on the rule you've picked. If I know exactly where I'm going to invest, I can go into the use specific funds mode and exactly the same as we did under the current plan, I can use the fund picker, I can use the full fund search or I can use smart paste. Last option is centralized investment proposition. I say last option because it's the same as the next one. That one's just filtered by risk, which again is something we're not going to get into in this session. Um, so centralized investment proposition. This is basically all of my model portfolios on the system. Some of these may be system supplied. Some of them might have been created by yourselves or by a colleague. But it's nice and easy in here because you can literally just say, I want to use that model portfolio. Again, you've got a using rule. Um, you can choose whether you're using only the funds in that portfolio or if you're looking for the cheapest share class available. Um, all sorts of different options under there. Exactly the same options as you've got in the fund, fund mode as well. Okay, as I say, we will spend some time on that in a later session uh, because it's an important part of the system and it's also consistent across each of the quote areas. But for now, let's go back to sector defaults. You can see I can continue the journey. I can pick my advisor charging. I can filter the product list. I can do all of those things. Um, but you can also come out of this at any point and get results when you've got the OK tick. So that's what I'm going to do now. So yeah, if, you, if, if your process sends you through different advisor charging for every quote, different product filters every time, you, there's absolutely no problem at all with continuing on this journey. Likewise, if it doesn't, if you've got some defaults that you're happy to rely on, you don't need to go through that process every time. You can simply OK at this point. Okay, and now you're greeted by the results set. So what we've got here is a list of products, all the ones programmed in on the system or any, any you might have added yourself through custom products. And it will show you, based on cost alone, the largest maturity value to the lowest maturity value. And at some point in that list, you'll see your existing plan. So in my case, there it is, in between 7th and 8th, Abbey Life Personal Pension. Um, what you'll also notice is at the bottom of the screen, we've got some extra information. This is linked to what we were talking about with the current investments. Um, we've got the past performance chart, risk reward, a difference in CER over the last five years, discrete returns, and asset allocation. Your list might not be exactly the same as that. One of the great things about the system is you can totally customize the look and feel of each of these screens. So we might have guided you through making a few changes to that. You might have just picked a different default one. Again, there will be a dedicated session all about creating and designing dashboards. But in the meantime, if your system doesn't look like this and you want it to, give us a call. We'll, we'll set it up exactly like this. Um, It'll take just a few moments to do, it's dead easy. 
So yeah, so, so what we're looking at in the results set here is my pension switching results. This is a list you can customize. Um, so I might tweak this a little bit from, from what you see. That's, that's absolutely fine. Again, that's something we can help you do. But some of the core numbers will be there nonetheless. So inflation adjusted maturity value, just as it says, um, a direct comparison between the old and the new. We've also got this important column, the AGR ASM. So AGR, additional growth required, ASM, annual safety margin. And if it's a negative number, it's a safety margin. If it's a positive number, it's additional growth required. All that is designed to show you is this plan from Alliance Trust beats my Abbey Life plan by £3,000 after inflation. What that actually means, though, is that it, it can afford to grow at 0.1% less every year and still match the Abbey Life plan at 215. So that's what that number is telling us. It, it can afford to grow at 0.1 less. Conversely, if I come down at 7 a.m., that extra two grand that they need to make up, that's as little as 0.1% every year. So, you know, when we're looking at that and then comparing it to this five-year CAR comparison, we're saying over the last five years, the fund that it's picked for 7IM has outperformed the Abbey Life Fund by five and a quarter percent. And in reality, we just need to beat it by 0.1 every year. So it, it's not just about cost, and that's the advantage that we got from adding in those current plans. So it is worth doing if you can, but not the end of the world if you can't. Okay, if you want to look at some different results, you can simply change them under here. So if I want to look at the maturity values at low, mid, and high, the nominal values, inflation adjusted, all those things you can adjust dead easily. Just pick a different one in that list. Probably the other thing you're going to want to do is generate a report. So we've got a report icon at the top here. Simply click on that. Print screen, that'll give you the results set. So that's a simple results list um, showing you these charts at the bottom of the screen as well. Um, or if you're looking for something to give to the client, the switching report is our core client facing report that goes through all of the details about the old and the new plan, the advantages and disadvantages of switching and everything else. Um, I'm not gonna go through each of the reports in this video. Uh, we're happy to do that with you, of course. Um, so if you've got any questions about the report, please send them through. But I could spend a lot of time going through the reports on these. And really what I want to get out of this is, is the core functionality of the system and getting you up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, so yeah, if you've got any questions about the reports, by all means, send them over. We'll be happy to help. You can see there's some other reports in here as well. So you can do a direct portfolio comparison between the old and the new. Um, there's a big long list here of reports. What I'd probably recommend at some point is, is having a look at um, which reports you use You'll see we've got this favoriting mechanism. So what we've done out of the box is favorite some of the reports for you. They're kind of the recommended ones for want of a better word. And um, they're not for everyone. You might prefer some different ones. But if there's a report in there that you don't use, simply uncheck the star. It'll move back into the pack with everything else. And if there's one you prefer instead, you can simply add it to the top of the list. I'll move up to the top of the list and it'll be there available for you next time. There's a few other clever things you can do with reports, such as bundling them together with a report pack wizard. That's another thing I'm not going to cover today, um, but it, it's something you can do. So if you find yourself printing two or three reports every single time, let us know. We'll talk you through creating your own report pack. You only need to do that once and that'll then appear in this list as a report that you can pick and it'll simply just bundle all those together. Okay. Um, you can also get to the reports from the menu at the bottom of the screen. So I haven't clicked on this yet, but you'll see there's lots of things you can do to this quote by clicking on the switching quote button. So you've got reports there, but more importantly, you've also got the access points to make changes to this quote. So if I want to make a change to the client, to the current plans, new investments, if I want to add in custom products, want to make product adjustments, perhaps we've already got some money with 7IM and we need to tell the system that's there. You can do all of those things under there. Um, this is also important because when I go back home, and I want to get back into that switching quote, it's going to take me straight to the results. So if you remember when we created our brand new switching quote, it took us straight to the inputs because it needed information. Well, now it doesn't need information, so it's going to take us to results, and we need to know how to get back in to make changes if we want to. So this gives me a good opportunity to show you the best way to get back into a quote. So the important thing to remember here is, when you're clicking on the main button, you're saying, I'm going to create a new quote. So you see the wording there, run a new switch or transfer quote. That's not what we want to do this time. We want to edit an existing quote. So there's a couple of options. We've got existing quotes down here. We've got continue with if it was the last thing we did. But you'll also notice on each of these icons where we've been already, there are three little dots. And if I click on them under switching, 
my most recent pension switching cases are at the top. So if I look at that one, it takes us straight back into the quote. I'm not creating a new quote, I'm going straight back into the one I've already done. And as we said, it's taken us to the results set, it's not taken us to the inputs. So all you need to remember is everything you can do for this quote lives under that button. I want to make a change to the new investments. So this will take us back into the new investment editor. This time around though I can do something different. So I'm going to go into fund mode. I could add the funds in like we did before, but this is, gives me a good opportunity to show you smart paste. Click on that. I have some data that I've grabbed from elsewhere. Big long list of ISINs with percentages. Hit convert. and it automatically adds all of those funds in there. Much quicker way, so it's definitely worth using Smart Paste when you can. So it'll take you a while to add in those funds. Um, I'm gonna leave it on, find me the cheaper share class for each of these and recalculate results. There we go. So hopefully a good introduction to pension switching. And um, what we've done today is we've gone through very basics, entering in our current plan, getting to results, generating reports, and making changes to that quote. We've also quickly shown you how to get back into that quote for next time as well. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching.